1109, Big 550 KTRS. Ongoing conversations about the uh, West Westlake landfill, as well as that uh, nuclear uh, West uh, that nuclear site in uh, Bridgeton. And uh, we've had a number of people on over the course of the last uh, months and weeks talking about, we've had everybody on uh, months and weeks talking about all different sides of it. And uh, Jeff Abusi wrote a letter to the editor, and we thought we'd get him on uh, to get his point of view on all this. St. Louis Building and Construction Trades Council, you are the executive director, Jeff Abusi. Welcome back to Big 550 KTRS. Thank you, McGraw. Your letter to the editor said what? Well, basically, it said that it's time that we recognize the fact of doing nothing is not good for the citizens uh, that surround this landfill. And it's time to move forward with the best trained workforce that are trained in this particular type of work to remediate the site. And we understand that the Corps of Engineers has a, a letter of decision that dates back to 2008 and it's time to start remediating this mess. Okay, so you're re- referring to the EPA's 2008 decision that says to leave it where it is and just cap it, correct? That's correct. Okay, because cap is two different things. One is an entombment, which they did out in Weldon Springs. That's correct. And the other one is a cap, if you will, that just basically puts dirt over the top of it, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, is it not true that... The EPA, outside of the region, has said it's time to revisit that decision from 2008 that the EPA had. And while they say that it's time to revisit it, right now that's what we have to work on. So there's not a multitude of of uh, potential options that are mandated to to proceed. Uh, It's unfortunate that the people that operate the landfills and operate uh, the trash disposal company worn out the generators of that potential waste that's in the ground. Right. But until you start, number one, creating the barrier wall between the two landfills and actually seeing exactly what's in that excavation trench, um, I think right now that the 2008 agreement is all we have to work for, work with. Okay, but while digging that trench, did they not find nuclear waste in that trench, which which they didn't think it was there at all? So they don't even know where the nuclear waste is. I know they have taken samples at various sites, uh, at various uh, points around that site. However, the uh, the excavation for this trench has not yet begun yet. Uh, we understand that that is forthcoming in just a matter of months to, to start. But why do we want to, as a community rely on a decision in 2008 that the EPA says we need to revisit that decision from 2008? Well, you know, I don't know exactly um, why they want to revisit it now, but I'm sure that as you begin doing the forms of remediation and cleanup to make this a a, a safe place, Mm -hmm. I'm sure this could be a very long work in progress and i'm sure that as they get into these things that it's possible that that 2008 decision could change Mm -hmm. but i think the work needs to begin and we've waited a long long time and you know we keep kicking this can down the road and everybody wants it fixed i mean the neighborhood uh the people that live there definitely want to know that there's some safeguards in, in in place to protect their community and I think we've went through this with Weldon Springs. When, if you really look back into the the history of that project, and I happen to work there for six years, um, they messed with that for a long, long time, doing it in bits and pieces. And when they finally came to the conclusion that we need to have the the contractor, which was uh, M.K. Ferguson, do a total remediation and a direct hire with local people that are trained in hazardous waste and and toxic rad waste. Things started to move forward. So I think that's the point in history where we're at uh, back then, and, and I see it repeating itself now. If we – I think I think everyone can agree we should get moving on it. But the question is, if we rely on the 2008 decision and we cap it and don't entomb it, um, there are people now who are saying it might uh, – this nuclear waste might get to the groundwater. It might be airborne. I mean – while we should take care of it, capping it might not solve the problem. And McGraw, I agree with you. It may not. But 
here's what you have. You have an agency, such as the Corps of Engineers, that are very proficient in doing this type of work. They worked on various projects handling rad waste in the St. Louis region. Uh, the project out at the airport was supervised by the Corps of Engineers. At least you have a government agency that, that will begin to provide the oversight to make sure that what's being done is being done correctly and completely. So, like I said, this could be a work in progress. They could change directions. Um, but I think the fact that they're at the helm and not the actual owner, which is Republic, and I think they've embraced the Corps' recommendations. They've embraced the Corps' involvement to supervise, write the specifications, and make sure that the contractors that do work on this project do it to the specs of the federal government. People who are listening to this, people like myself who are new to the game, who are being educated on this, look at the Weldon Springs nuclear waste site and this nuclear waste site. What we're being told, it's from the same project, right? It's the same stuff. Sure, the same generator. Right. right. Why would we entomb one of them? And just cap the other one. If they're the both nuclear waste, why wouldn't we do the same thing to both? Well, number one, I don't think we really know the quantities yet to say that the quantities are identical to what happened at Weldon Springs. So I do think that as you get into this, and I do think that as the Corps monitors these digs as they start to begin to remediate, again, I think it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. I think uh, from working on projects of the site like uh, Weldon Springs, we thought we had a larger area, and we wound up with smaller quantities. We started doing certain digs in certain areas that thought uh, that they were going to be just uh, a few hundred yards of material that wound up being several thousand. But the thing is, the core will not allow them to just walk away and say, okay, we're done, when there's still contaminants in the ground. Okay, so you're saying that if they start with this, um, with this, with this cap, if you will, and they get a quarter of the way into it, halfway into it, and they realize, oh, my goodness, this is worse than we thought. We need to entomb it. You, you think people are able to move on a dime and change that decision and then throw good money after bad money? Well, I will say with the workforce that I represent and the contractors from this area that have worked on projects like Weldon Springs, and a lot of them from this region worked out there, I know that the change in condition generates quick and immediate response. And I think that they'll have the best trained workers that will recognize and cooperate with the agencies that are actually doing the monitoring and the quality control and the inspection and all those things. What's stopping Republic right now from cleaning up this site, according to the 2008 decision from the EPA? It's my understanding, and in some of the discussion that we've had, that there are certain specifications that are being written right now so that contractors can actually start preparing bids and costs associated with this cleanup. And I, I, from what we're hearing, that this could start within several months. So they're going, they're going full, full steam ahead with the 2008 agreement to uh, do whatever is necessary to fulfill that, that 2008 decision. I believe they are. Um, you you are smart, Jeff Abusi. You see the political landscape. Um, politicians in Washington D.C. can't agree on what day of the week it is, and yet uh, Senator Blunt, Senator McCaskill, Congressman Clay, uh, Congressman Ann Wagner, and I'm sure a couple others all agree that this should be taken out of the EPA's hands and given to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and they say we need to revisit this. If all of those people are on the same page, why why are you against that? Well, McGraw, I'm not against them revisiting the 2008 agreement if there's specific reasons for them to do so. But I think we have a we have an agreement, we have a mandate to start the process mm -hmm. of remediation. I think that needs to be done. I think the citizens of that region have been uh, patiently waiting for some things to finally come down uh, the path to ensuring them that the environment, their drinking water, their areas where their children play are going to be cleaned up so that they feel safe. And I think by just waiting for more and more and more studies, I think that's doing a disservice to the residents. And yeah. I think Republic is ready to get on with the program. Is Republic ready? Because it, it's all going to come down to cost. And I mean, but...
it seems to me like people are afraid that you're halfway through it. Republic says, hey, wait a minute, we're already doing this. Now you want us to do more? No, 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 hold on a second. We're just a, we're doing what you told us to do in 2008. If you want us to do something else, well, then you should have told us. We're going to do this, and then it's somebody else's problem. Seems like you want it done correctly the first time, right? I mean, that's sort of the argument I think the other guys are saying. Let's wait and get it done right. You're saying let's do it now, and if it needs to be done right later or differently, we can change. <laughs> Well, I think one of the first things that they're talking about doing is creating this isolation barrier between the two actual landfills itself. Right. I think that's a step one regardless of what you do after that fact, whether it's entombment, capping, or totally transporting this waste off-site, which I think is probably the worst possible thing to do is to load this thing out and travel it through other states, other neighborhoods, on our roads. Uh, Why is that? Well, because I think that the, it's not the safest way to do it. I think that you keep it right there, just like they did at Weldon Springs. You know where it's going to be, and you you monitor the quantities, and you know what gets put in a a, a given site. But I think uh, I think there are risks. I mean, we're watching what's going on right now with the rail industry and moving oil and petroleum. So you're seeing contaminations happen as they start to bring oil from the oil sands in Canada into the United States. I think that's a bad method. We do uh, y we do use rail uh, to transport nuclear waste all, all over the place every day here in America, don't we? We do. Right. I think these quantities, though, are going to be so excessive that trans transporting large quantities mm -hmm. of the contaminants that are in the ground, I think, could be very dangerous to various communities. If it's so dangerous to move, then why isn't it so dangerous to entomb. Well, it is, and I think that's why you have people to right, but, do but, that work right, that are but, certified. But, but if it's too dangerous to move, right? Oh, my goodness, it's so dangerous, we better not move it because we will contaminate more different whatever. Then it's got to be a dangerous enough to not just cap it, but to truly do what they did in Weldon Springs, which is entomb it so that it, it, it doesn't get into the groundwater, it, it doesn't seep into the river, it doesn't get airborne. So I think the people from Britson are upset and, and confused. If it's too dangerous to move, then it should be too dangerous to stay where it is. I think that's the, the best case scenario is to leave it on site and keep it where it's all together versus seeing debris fall off trucks and rail cars. It happens. We're talking about soil and material. So I think... Uh, right, but but capping it from what the scientists are saying mm -hmm. is not the safest way to do it. It will still be airborne. It can still get into the groundwater and so on and so forth, which is why so many people want the EPA to revisit this decision. So... I guess the question is, what's taking so long? If it's so dangerous, why? what's the argument to entomb it? Why not just cut to the chase, cut the red tape, get someone to agree that it's too dangerous? If it's too dangerous to move, it, it should be too dangerous to stay where it is. Well, let me just tell you this. Entombing it would be a much larger project. It would put probably twice as many of the men and women in the building trades to work. So would I be for a larger project? Absolutely, we're for a larger project. Well, we're not scientists, so we're going to leave that up to the powers to be to determine the most scientific method to to take care of this waste. All I can tell you is whether they do the cap, whether they continue to put a leachate system, which they're doing right now so that they can treat groundwater, whether they put a barrier wall up to separate the two landfills, both of those projects, including entombment, and building a huge containment cell. Either way, that's going to be done with the best trained workforce, and they're right here in St. Louis, and the employers and contractors are right here to do it. Jeff Busey is uh, our guest, St. Louis Building and Contractor Trades Council Executive Director. Um, we got a break. Can you stick around for the sure. segment? Jeff Busey is with us, 924 here, Big 550.